and welcome back to The Watchman and our special look inside Yad Vashem, the World Holocaust Remembrance Center in Jerusalem. Now, before the break, our tour guide, Malky Weisberg, showed us what life was like for the Jews during the Holocaust. Now she'll share the story of a Jewish teenager named Rivka, who was the daughter of a rabbi. Her story of survival during the Holocaust is unlike any I have heard. Listen to this. I'd like to tell you a story about a young woman named Rivka, who was from a town in Galicia called Buchach. Galicia was in Poland and Rivka was about 17. She uh, was the daughter of the rabbi of the city and her father had passed away under the Germans and she was with her mother and she was engaged so her fiance was in her town at that point as well. And the Nazis started their actions where they were collecting the Jews of the town to take them away to the death camps. And they found them and they forced them out and they marched them to the train station. That day there were about 1,200 to 1,400 Jews from the town of Buchach that were taken to the train station. The young men were taken to one side where they were going to go to a work camp, so her fiancé was taken away. She and her mother were told to sit on the ground with about 1,200 other people. And the Nazis insisted on silence. Well, when you have a lot of children, and when you have elderly, and people are thirsty, and people are crying and scared, it's not going to be quiet. And the Nazis just were beating and shooting, and the scene was hor horrific. And Rivka said to her mother quietly, let's escape. we got to get out of here. This place is, they just want to kill us. And her mother tried to calm her, but she said, Rivka, where are we going to go? We are surrounded by guards and, and dogs and guns, and we have nothing. The train comes, and she's shocked. She's been on trains in her life. That's the mode of transportation in Europe. But it wasn't a train for people. It was a cattle car for animals. And they were brutally pushed onto this cattle car, and from the second she's pushed in, she's looking for a way out. The train is locked. It's on its way. It's moving. It's moving quite fast. And she's looking around, it was dark, but she sees in the top upper hand, right corner of the cradle car, there's a window. And the window is covered with wooden slats and barbed wire. And she turns to her mother and she says, I have an idea of how I can escape. Her mother was only 52, but she was much too weak to do such a thing. But Rivka was 17 and she wanted to live. And she said, I can jump out that window, but I'm not gonna do it unless you give me your blessing. And her mother said her last words to her. She said, maybe if you're out there, I'll be better off where they're taking me. And Rivka took that as a blessing. And she climbed on top of a barrel that she was able to get over to the window. It was very crowded, but people helped her. She ripped off the wooden slats and which them, with them pushed out the barbed wire. The window's open. And when the window's open, she looks at her mother one last time as the train is going on a little bit of an incline, so it slowed a bit. And she took that jump and she made it. She fell into a cornfield and the corn was high and she was very lucky because it covered her. The train is gone, it's dark, and Rivka says, what did I just do? So at that moment she realizes that both her mother and her fiance are gone. And as she lay in the cornfield crying, she hears voices. First she's terrified, but as they get closer, she hears Yiddish, the Jewish colloquial language. She realizes it's Jews, she calls out, Two young men help her up. She was okay, a little bruised, but okay. And they said, where did you come from? She said, I jumped off the train. Where did you come from? And they said, so did we. And the two young men tell her that they know the roads. They're walking back to town. It'll take them the whole night, the whole way there, back to her town. Rivka is praying that she will find what she had hidden in her hiding place. Just two months before, with her engagement ring, she purchased false papers identification papers that said she's a Christian girl by the name of Paulina Valanska. She bought them just in case, just in case was now. She got back to town, found her papers, and she also found a brother and sister-in-law and their baby who had survived the action. They took her in and in two days, she and her brother found a very kind Polish woman who was willing to risk her life and take Rivka to Warsaw, a town with a, the city with a million people that nobody knew her, get her a job as Paulina Valanska. She's getting ready to go when her brother runs with an envelope towards her and says, Rivka, this just came with the underground Jewish post. And the, the envelope was addressed to her brother, 
but she saw the handwriting was her fiance. And she ripped it open and he writes to his future brother-in-law, I was in a horrible camp near Lvov called Yanovska, but I miraculously escaped. But what is my life worth if my bride was murdered in Belzitz? Well, his bride wrote him that she's alive and she begged him to be very careful, but come to her town and together they would figure out a route of escape. He got to her town, which again was miraculous, because Germans could figure out if a man, a male, was Jewish immediately. And together they decided that she would go off to Warsaw with these false papers, because a Jewish girl to do that was dangerous but doable. For a man it was almost impossible. For him they found a hiding place in the outskirts of her town. They parted ways not knowing if they would ever see each other again. And I would like to continue the story a little later in the museum. Powerful stuff. And when we come back, the conclusion to Rivka's story and the surprise ending, you will not want to miss. Trust me, stay with us after the break. <laughs> 